the basis of healing in the Old Testament, healing in the New Testament and healing today. So when we study the Old Testament, the first mention of healing, that is God healing Abimelech, heathen king Abimelech, because Abraham prayed. God healed Abimelech, his household, his queen, his wives, concubines. They started to have children. When God pray, when Abraham prayed to God and God heard him. So the healing, the first mention of healing began from the story of Abraham and Abimelech. After that, we see healing. We see healing throughout the Bible. God healed Hezekiah, God healed Sarah, God healed Hannah, God uh, healed uh, uh, Job. We see throughout the Bible healing that took place in the Old Testament. What was the basis for God to heal those people? In Old Testament, what was the basis for God to heal them? Throughout the Bible, when you study from Genesis to Revelation, you find only one answer, one reason for anyone's healing. Only one reason, only one answer the Bible gives. That's the title for today's message. By his stripes, you were healed. That is the only reason, only answer the Bible gives. By his stripes, you were healed. Then in Old Testament, on what basis God healed? By his stripes you were healed is an event that happened in New Testament. But in Old Testament, on what basis God healed? In the wilderness, when we see when the people were dying, Israelites, God told to Moses, put a bronze serpent and lift it high. Let the people see, whoever were bitten by snake, let them see the bronze serpent. Whoever sees the bronze serpent shall live. And that person lived. So on what basis God healed those Israelites? They had to look at the bronze serpent. They had to look forward to Messiah being crucified. They had to look forward to to this verse being fulfilled. By his stripes, they were healed. So God healed them. God healed Abimelech. God healed Sarah. God healed Hannah. God healed Job. God healed Israelites on basis of one thing that his son will be dying. His son will be taking stripes. So their healing was on credit that Jesus had to come and die. Their healing was on credit. It, they were looking forward for Messiah to come. They were looking forward for him to come and take the punishment on their behalf. Now, finally, we see in the Gospels, in Matthew, Jesus comes in flesh. Father God sent his beloved son. The word became flesh. Now he comes in flesh and starts healing people. He heals the leper. He heals the blind. He heals the sick. He heals the lame. He heals everyone. Daughter of Syrophician, the woman's son who was dead, he raises him from dead. He raises Lazarus from dead. He healed them again on credit. That he was going to be beaten. So in the book of Matthew, there is a beautiful reference that goes back to Isaiah. So first I want you to read Isaiah chapter 53 verse 4 and 5. What we confess every Sunday during our Holy Communion. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. This is the reason, this is the basis. God saw his son suffering, bearing our sickness, our transgressions. He bore our sorrows. He bore our sickness and by his stripes. So God saw this activity. God saw this event happening 
and based on that he healed the people in the old testament and isaiah under the revelation of god it's a divine revelation from god that god prophesied through isaiah that by his stripes you will be healed so this prophecy was made thousands of years before jesus was born after jesus was born now what jesus did he went about healing all Matthew chapter 8 verse 16 and 17. What Jesus did and why Jesus did. Let's read that. Matthew 8, 16 and 17. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed. And he cast out the spirits with the word and healed all. How many he healed? All. all. He healed all who were sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying he himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness. Amen. On what basis Jesus healed that leper? For the scripture to be fulfilled. On what basis Jesus raised Lazarus from dead? For this scripture to be fulfilled, that he is going to bear our sickness, our infirmities, our grief, our sorrows. By his stripes we are healed. For that scripture to be fulfilled, Jesus went to the whipping post. Amen. When the Jewish leaders handed over Jesus to the Roman soldiers and asked him to be whipped, and scourged and beaten and then taken to the cross. He, he, he need, they told him he need to be punished and he was supposed to be crucified. When this whole plan was going on with the, through the high priest and it was the plan done by the synagogue leaders, it was looking like it was plan of man. It was looking like it was plan of man. But was it a plan of man? No, it's not. Absolutely not. It was the fulfillment of Isaiah chapter 53. So Jesus was handed over by father to Roman soldiers. And it was not the hand of Roman soldiers. It was the right hand arm of God. It was the arm of God that whipped Jesus. Because God had made a law. You because God is God of justice. He has to execute justice. Without justice, he cannot show mercy. Because both are the pillars of God's throne. There are four pillars of God's throne. So he cannot compromise. So he had to execute justice and then show them mercy. To execute justice, he, had, he, had, he wanted Jesus to be whipped. So Jesus was taken to the whipping post. Now Jesus taken to the whipping post and being whipped altogether is a different event. It is a different event. Jesus coming to the cross and dying on the cross is another different event. So when Jesus went to the whipping post, they stripped him naked. They removed his clothes so that when the Roman soldiers were whipping, it was not just a, a normal uh, whip that they used. They had metal uh, rods that was attached to that. If you study history of uh, Roman government, how they would punish the criminal. When they were flogged, it is called. When they were whipped, the skin, the flesh from his body would come out. So that's why he had to be removed. The, he, he was shamed. He was, he was humiliated. That was a separate event. Jesus was humiliated. So they, they took out and Jesus was whipped. So when Jesus was holding on to that whipping post, when Jesus was taking that beating, this promise was fulfilled. Jesus was purchasing the healing of the whole world by his stripes you were healed. It's a done deal. It's over. It's finished activity. It was a separate event that happened at the whipping post. Irrespective of a person, Christian or non-Christian, whoever, believer, non-believer, Jesus healed them. Are you with me? 
Are you getting this? Jesus healed every unbeliever. Jesus healed even the child to be born 10 years from now. Jesus finished that at the whipping post. Jesus healed you even before you were saved. Because this happened 2000 years ago. Even before you had faith for your healing. Jesus healed you. Amen. Hallelujah. So your faith did not provide your healing. It was God's grace that provided your healing. Even before you could receive Jesus as the Lord, God's grace provided your healing. It is a done deal. It is over. You have to just believe by his stripes. It's an event. It was a separate activity. It was a separate event that happened that Jesus was taken to the whipping post. Many a times as Christians, we come directly to the cross. We come to the cross for forgiveness of our sins. Galatians 3.13 Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law by being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree. So Jesus took our curse. Jesus took our punishment. Jesus took our suffering. We come to cross, the event of cross where he said, uh, I am a good friend. I am a good shepherd. I lay down my life for my sheep. So you come and you take his life. You say, yes, Jesus laid down his life. I receive forgiveness of my sins. But we exempt, we avoid, we exclude the event of whipping post. We directly come to cross. But cross has a flow. There was event that followed one after the other. The first event was in the garden of Gethsemane. When Jesus being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. What a beautiful statement. When you are in agony, when you are in depression, when you are in sorrow, the Bible gives answer. Pray more earnestly. Amen. That's what Jesus did, right? That's what we are to do. We have to follow Jesus. He prayed more honestly. So when he prayed more earnestly, so when, when he was in agony, so why he went through that agony? Why his agony was so deep that his sweat became like great drops of blood. That means so much of sorrow, so much of depression, so much of anxiety, so many thoughts, what is going to happen all that agony Jesus took. Why? Why that event is recorded in Luke 22, 44? It was a separate event. Many a times as Christians, we exclude that event. We exclude whipping post. We directly come to the cross. I receive forgiveness of sins, which is difficult. When Jesus healed the man on Sabbath day, they came and, uh, they, they came and told, who are you? How can you heal? Jesus said, what is difficult? Is it difficult to heal or is it difficult to say you're forgiven from your sins? You're forgiven of your sins. Jesus said, you're forgiven of your sins. And he said, take up your bed and walk. So both was done simultaneously. Healing and also forgiveness of sins. Many a times we exclude the event of Garden of Gethsemane. We exclude the event of his agony, his depression, that anxiety that Jesus went through. Why Jesus went through? Everything that Jesus went through was the will of the Father. It was master plan of the Father. So basically God took our sorrows, our depression, our failures, our shame, our pain. He took that and put on Jesus. When he put that on Jesus, Jesus was in great agony because the depression of the world, anxiety of the world was on his head. So when you come to that event, when you receive that work of Jesus, when you discern the Lord's body that he shed his blood, at that time you are receiving healing for your soul. The Bible says he heals the broken hearted. You receive healing for your soul. How it happens? I don't know. He gives the peace that passeth all understanding. That means what? It's beyond your understanding. It's beyond your understanding. You don't know from where you have the joy. The world cannot understand. The world cannot have it because they don't have Jesus. When they have Jesus, they have the joy because Jesus is joy. Jesus is 
peace. Jesus is life. Amen. So they have to come to that event and give their sorrows, give their depression to Jesus. Cast your cares on to him. Cast your cares. Because why? He cares for you. He cares for you. He just didn't tell that in words. He did it in action. Amen. He did it in action in the garden of Gethsemane. After that, the next event was at the whipping post. Many a times we exclude that event. We don't come to God asking healing. We say that it's okay. In this world, there may be sickness. There may be troubles. There may be problems. In heaven, I am going to have a healthy body. No. Jesus told, pray that the, the, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is or the kingdom of heaven come on earth. Thy will be done. What is the will of the father? That you be healed by his stripes. If you are not receiving your healing, the event of Jesus at the whipping post is in vain. If we have not received our healing, that means the event that Jesus did at the whipping post is in vain. So we cannot exclude, exclude that. We must recognize that at separate event, by his stripes, I was healed. It's over. It is done. It's done for everybody in the world. I was healed physically. I was healed emotionally. I was healed mentally. I was healed. And then the next event, my curse is taken on the cross. If Jesus had to shed the blood, he could have just directly gone to the cross. There could have been another means to die, right? But why Jesus had to go through this procedure? He first shed his blood by sweat of drops of blood. Next he shed his blood at the whipping post. His blood was shed. His blood was shed at whipping post. And then the next event, he was crucified. And he laid down his life. He took your punishment. He died in your place. So I no longer live. Christ who lives in and through me. Amen. So we cannot come directly to this event. You have to go through the event by flow one after the other. So you must know that it was a separate event and you must receive that healing and say, God, by his stripes, I was healed. That is the only basis. That is the only reason for my healing. 1 Peter 2.24, now after the resurrection of Jesus, what is it written in the Bible? By his stripes you were healed. It is a past tense. It is over. Old Testament people were looking forward for Jesus to come and take the suffering. They were looking forward. God was looking forward for his son to suffer. So he healed all the people in the Old Testament. Now in the New Testament, we look back. We look at Jesus and we say Jesus already suffered. Jesus already died. The matter is over. The case is finished. He said it is finished. I am healed. That is the truth. If there is sickness in your body, it's a fact. But the fact will change as you continue to know this truth and you believe this truth. Amen. To whom the arm of the Lord revealed? The arm of the Lord is revealed to him who believes. So when you believe, the arm of the Lord is revealed more and more. That's why it says in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse number 3. As his divine power... His divine power has given, has given his past tense or present tense? Past tense. Has given. When this was given? When this was given? When this was given to you? His divine power has given to us all things. When this divine power came into you, the same power that rose Jesus from dead, lives where? In lives in us. When did it begin to live in you? When, we when you believed and said, Jesus is my Lord. When you made Jesus your Lord, that day something supernatural happened. Your dead spirit came back to life. This divine power came in you. Now divine power is where? Is it in heaven? Yes. Divine power is in some big cathedral. Where is divine power? The divine power is in us. That's what it says in your Bible. That's what it's written. As his divine power has given to us 
all things what are those all things what are those all things healing prosperity money you need a bride you need a groom you need marks what you need all things you need a building you need gold you need porsche what you need you need apple phone what you need all things name it you need land you need wealth all things all things when the bible says all it means all all things pertaining to life more detailed explanation is given that pertains to life and godliness physical blessing spiritual blessing that's what it means life and godliness how how you can acquire this it is given where is it given in your spirit the power is where in your spirit blessings are where in your spirit everything pertaining to life and godliness is in your spirit your healing is where today in your spirit your prosperity is where today in your spirit now how you can acquire it in your body answer is in the same verse through the knowledge of him you can acquire it through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue so you need to have knowledge of whom right. jesus amen so now you understand why we preach more new testament the knowledge of him old testament is a shadow of jesus obviously the whole bible is about jesus no doubt about that you need to grow in the knowledge of jesus the more you grow in knowledge of jesus the more you understand what he purchased for you what he has accomplished for you what he has given you by his grace the more you understand this the more you get the knowledge of this the more you get the revelation of this and the more you believe this the arm of the lord is revealed to you amen hallelujah so you must know that it was a separate event that is why the bible says healing is a sign healing is not a reward amen. healing is not a reward my dear friend it's very deep you must understand healing is not a reward it's a sign because it says in mark chapter 16 was 18 these signs will follow them they that they believe what are those signs you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover you can drink anything deadly and it shall not hurt you by no means nothing shall harm you these are signs these are signs that will follow them that believe you have to believe it is very simple you just believe today you are seated in the church because you believe that jesus is your lord you believe that jesus died for you do you have any doubt do you have any doubt that you are not saved those of you who are saved you have absolutely no doubt you have no doubt you know for sure jesus is my lord jesus is my savior jesus is my life i have given my life to him how did you get that faith how come you had so much faith when the sun came to you when the word came to you the faith of the sun has come to you it is the faith of the spirit it is faith of the sun that has come to you with that faith you believed in jesus now you are saved forever as simple as that you have to believe this event at the whipping post jesus paid for my sickness when jesus took that whipping i was healed and i established dominion and authority on that devil you have no legal right to be in my body you have no legal right to be in me no sickness no pain no infirmity do not negotiate with the devil it's a minor headache it's a minor pain it's a minor problem no you cannot negotiate any minor sickness is nothing but a form of baby death any minor sickness is nothing but it is a baby death see death is the deterioration of your body right or wrong so any sickness a small sickness is what's happening it's destroying your cells right we do not negotiate you have to command it to get out of your body you don't you don't compromise it's okay i can live with this no you don't have to live with this you don't compromise you don't have to live with this you command you say get out of my body i resist you i resist you until end because this is my territory it is purchased by my god i'll tell you god is with you in this battle 
God is with you in this battle. You just resist it, I will tell you. It is not by our strength we possess the land. It is the favor of the Lord that helps us to possess the promised land. Amen? You will possess your promised land. Just resist that sickness. We don't tolerate. Even small sickness, we are in the fallen world. All of us fall sick. Sometime or the other, we get some sickness or the other. So don't condemn yourself. Why this came to me? Have I sinned? Have I done the problem? No, it's nothing to do with your sin. It's nothing to do with your sin. Now that you have received Jesus, there's no sin in your life. Amen. Now that you have Jesus, you are forever accepted, perfect, holy, righteous, blameless. So the sickness comes because we are in the fallen world, fallen earth, the sickness comes. But then we must know that Jesus has paid for this. Jesus has done this complete for me. So I admonish dominion. I establish dominion. I don't give up. I don't give up. I will fight the good fight of faith. Amen. I'll fight the good fight of faith and continue to say and believe by his stripes I was healed. Healing is a sign not a reward. Let's, let me explain that. Sometimes what we think as believers, we think if I fast for 40 days, I will receive my healing. Do you think healing is a reward for your 40 days fasting? No. Do, do we think, okay, I'll give my offering so I'll get my healing? No. Is healing a reward for your offering? No. Today, I am going to go regularly and read the Bible for one hour. I'm going to receive my healing. No. Healing is not a reward. Healing is not a reward of what you do. It was paid. It was done. It was purchased. You simply believe. We are saved not by works. We are saved by grace. We simply believe and we take it. We take it. When we take it, we are so happy that now we want to read more Bible. Now we want to pray more. We don't want to pray for one hour. We want to pray every day, all the time. We want to fast. We want to be more closer to God, more focused on God. We want to fast 40 days. We want to do all that. It is a result of your relationship with God. It is not uh, effort to please God. It is not effort to uh, ask God to give you something. God has given even before you ask. Amen? Kindly get that. It's a very powerful truth. Let's go to Romans 5.2. Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. How do we have access into grace? We have access into this grace. All this is by grace, right? Healing, prosperity, blessing. All this is by grace. How do we have access into this? Access into this is by faith. It's very important. Access into this is by faith. I told you, healing is a sign. That's why when you go and pray to an unbeliever, an unbeliever who has no faith, but you have faith. You must have faith. Any one of you should have. So when you have faith, he gets healed. Because when you lay hand on the sick, he gets healed. We have seen, right? The other day, like a few months ago, we had one lady who was unbeliever. He was in the, she was in the last stage of cancer. She came. We prayed. She got healed. She got healed. But she didn't know about our God. She came only to the whipping post. She came to that event. But she didn't make Jesus the Lord. She didn't come to the cross. She didn't come to resurrection event. She didn't receive Jesus as the Lord. She received Jesus as the healer. She came. She came knowing that Jesus is the healer. And the prayer of faith will heal the sick. So we prayed. She got healed. And she went back. She didn't receive Jesus as the Lord. But our prayer is not immunization for a lifetime. It's not that they'll never get sick again. Prayer heals them. But for you to get your immunity from sickness, you need to come into the Lord. Amen? It's very deep thought. Hope you get it. So for you, our prayer is not immunity. We pray, we send lifetime that person is perfect. No. If for your protection, for your immunity, you must come to the Lord. Why? Because if your heart is empty, devil will go and get another seven demons along with him and to come and reside. So don't empty your heart and then go out in the wilderness. Empty your heart and give that throne to Jesus. Amen? So when we, that's why it says in the book of James, the prayer of faith will heal the sick. 
so when you have faith you you pray and they get healed they may not have faith are you getting the point they may not have why jesus said if you believe these signs will follow to them that believe so if you believe you lay hands on the sick you believe christ is in you if you command the mountain to move it will move so if you say i don't have that faith i am not able to believe it's the problem is not that you don't have faith actual problem is there is unbelief there is unbelief for that what we do we go to someone elder in the church someone in the church whom you think who can help you to pray with you so you ask that person to pray because the bible says the prayer of faith will heal the sick so that person will pray so two is better than one they stand with you when you fall down when you are weak when you are in unbelief somebody lifts you up it's a it's a deeper thought so they lift you up with their faith so that's why god has given us the body of christ where we come together pray for one another so its healing is a sign not a reward so you go you heal unbeliever he believes in jesus and he comes to church right or wrong he believes in jesus and he comes to church i'm not getting into the deeper explanation of mark 6 5 and matthew 13 58 i'll get into that some other day uh, on faith let's get into this how do we receive healing we receive access by faith we have access into his grace by faith amen hallelujah so we receive it by having faith in jesus it's very very important that we can access that exactly the same way we accessed our salvation it's a different event so you have come to the other event and not to salvation or some people come and receive forgiveness of sins but they never receive healing they exclude healing in christian life salvation is not complete salvation is not complete without healing prosperity and forgiveness of sins it is a word called sozo so all the three things should be there so you have to receive your complete healing mentally emotionally physically how you can receive that by knowledge of him continue to study about jesus continue to know about jesus that's why it says faith comes by hearing the word of god continue to keep hearing so there sh- you you can overcome and you can establish that in your body and you can say i was healed by his stripes i was healed it is over it is finished activity it's a separate event i come to jesus and i receive this activity i receive this event i receive this what jesus has accomplished the finished work so i don't want any one of you to be sick forgiven generation church should not have sick people because you have the knowledge of the son you are growing in the knowledge of him so we we, we don't have to be in pain in sickness that is not god's will for you if we if any one of us is going through it's not because of your sickness sin it's not because of any punishment absolutely not because we are in the fallen world devil will try to come attack but we have to resist fight and say that jesus paid this this activity was done jesus has healed me jesus has completely healed my body i believe that i stand on that i discern lord's body when i take communion so as you continue to meditate the healing which is in your spirit it will flow from your mind through your body amen it will flow from your mind through your body for some it can be instant for some it can be a process don't get discouraged and disappointed when it is a process when it's like not happening instantly why it didn't happen instantly you can see so many miracles jesus did they were few he did instant few there was a process the lepers were walking back to the temple on the way they got healed so some things are a process for that there is another explanation why it's a process we are not going into that but one thing is sure healing is a assured result in your life whether it is instant 
whether it's a process it is guaranteed result it's guaranteed with the proof of the seal of blood of jesus that by his stripes you were healed if you are in a process don't get discouraged you are in a process you are on the way to the promised land amen no sickness church today we'll raise our hands right hand and we will pray and we'll say just like how you prayed just like how you raised your hand and you said i received jesus as my lord and my savior after that you never doubted jesus being your lord you being saved exactly the same way i encourage you come to the event of whipping post today this morning see him there that's what isaiah said that's what peter says that's what matthew says by his stripes you were healed come to the whipping post daddy god i raise my hand to you i receive that healing yes it is a separate event it is done it is over it is not a reward of my fasting it is not a reward of my faith my faith is not in my faith my faith is in what jesus did at the whipping post i just believe that i receive i raise my hand to receive healing anybody having problem in the stomach problem in the mind depression sorrow sickness bp sugar kidney issues heart problems any kind i command from the roots to be plucked out of your body and be cast into the sea today because jesus at the whipping post took the beating for every one of us for me and for you no pain no sickness no infirmity no devil devil cannot touch your body sickness is from devil and he has no legal authority on your body your body is purchased by the blood of jesus you resist him push him out daddy god i lift my hand to you and today i receive the sacrifice the punishment that jesus took at the whipping post the jesus took the punishment of my depression by taking the thorn of crowns i receive that i just lift my hand and i receive my healing mentally i receive my healing emotionally i receive my healing physically hallelujah thank you jesus i have received church you can confess i have received i have received my healing i have come today to the whipping post and i have seen the sacrifice of my jesus i have received my healing i don't worry about it i don't talk about it i don't think about it i don't reason about it i don't talk to anybody about it because it is over it is done i just focus my eyes on jesus i have the knowledge of him i receive by his stripes i was healed amen